y'all for tuning in to Faith in Jesus Ministries. My name is Mike Barclay, the Preacher Man. We're so happy to you know, invite y'all on YouTube and Facebook. Y'all are going to be blessed from this message today. It's about laughter. God loves laughter. Laughter does the soul good like medicine, like good medicine. God bless you. I want to talk today about living joyful. It's easy to let the pressures of life weigh us down. The traffic to deal with, bills to pay, people that are rude. We're not careful. We look up and we don't smile as much. We're not as friendly. We never laugh. We never, laugh. never have fun anymore. We have too much pressure, too much responsibility to enjoy life. God didn't create you to live with the heaviness. You're not supposed to go around solemn, serious all the time, burdened down by problems. Taking time to laugh, to have fun, re-energizes you. It helps keep you in balance. It's all work, all stress, all dealing with problems. It's going to weigh you down. You can get so busy raising your children, changing diapers, getting them to school, helping them with their homework, that you don't enjoy your children. It's all work, no time to play. Sometimes we think we have to be serious to show we're responsible. But you can be responsible and good-natured at the same time. God created you with a sense of humor. Made to laugh, made to have. We let the pressures of life weigh you down. You're always solemn, always serious. You don't make this adjustment. Not only will you not enjoy your life, but you won't have good relationships. Nobody wants to be around a grumpy, sour person. Pushes people away. You represent Christ here on this earth. If you're a believer, you need to notify your face. Put a smile. Be good-natured. Be friendly. Learn to laugh. Scripture says a merry heart is like taking good medicine. Every day you need to take your medicine. Find something that makes you laugh. See the humor in life. The thing I love about my wife is she laughs all through the day. I can be in another part of the house and I can hear her laughing. It echoes through the whole house. Sometimes I'll go in to find out what it was and find out it wasn't that funny in the first place. Something small, most people would have ignored it. Not my wife, she's looking for opportunities to laugh. She loves to have fun. Keeps a joyful atmosphere in our home. While back we're standing on the front row during worship and my eyes closed, my hands folded. Beginning to think about what I was going to say next. My wife's much more outgoing. She had both hands in the air expressed. All of a sudden, while I was contemplating deep thought, Victoria threw her hip in the mind, knocked me over. She said, I looked at her and she said, come on, Stiffy, lighten up. She calls me stiff. I tell her the right word is dignified. My wife came in my office at home and asked me what I was going to speak on this week. She said, I'm going to speak on the joy of life. The joy of the Lord in humor and life. She put both hands in the air and said, Woohoo! I don't need that, but you sure do. People ask me all the time, What's the secret of good marriage? Always treat each other with respect and keep laughter in the relationship. The family that laughs together will stay together. Too often we used to laugh when we were dating, we used to have fun, to enjoy each other. Now we let the pressures of life cause us to become more solemn, have time, we have bills to pay, have children to raise. Dealing with problems. We don't see eye to eye on every situation. But the joy is going to help you get through the rough time. Happy together, having fun, that's going to help keep you together. I know a couple is having difficulties in their marriage. Good people, they just let the pressures of life get to them. About to separate. They decided to try something. Once a week, they rented a funny movie. Watched it together. They'd sit there and laugh and laugh. They told how that one simple thing helped change their perspective. Heal the wound. Fell back in love. Either happily married. Maybe you'd see your relationship go to a new level if you get more joy in the relationship. Living with pressure, stress, tension, division, anxiety, depression, de uh, addiction drive you apart. Take time to laugh again. Take time to have fun again. It's going to bring new life, freshness into your relationship. How long has it been since there was laughter in your relationship? Enemy can't stand to hear you laugh. Can't stand to have you having fun, to laughing with your children, laughing with your spouse, enjoying your life. Who wants there to be tension, pressure, strife? Why don't you get on the offensive and start laughing more defensive? After is spirit warfare. After brings down walls. After will help your family stay together. Yes, we all have to deal with tension and stress. But you need to create a joyful atmosphere in your home. Bring in pressures from work, pressures from school. Your home needs to be a retreat from the negative things in the world. I heard about this man. He had a tree in a pot next to his back door. He stopped and he was walking in the house with a friend. He stopped and touched the tree. friend asked him what he was doing. He said, this is my trouble tree. I leave all my troubles on this plant. Take any worry inside. I'll take any problems, any disappointments. Any offense, I leave it at the door. I don't need a trouble tree. Your home should be a cheerful place. Bringing in stressors, strife, on the way you down. Keep the negative outside. Keep a joy for atmosphere in your home. The hospital did experiment with patients. He was sick for a long time. weren't getting well. I started taking them out to the park several hours a day. Watch the children play. I discovered when they heard the children laughing over and over, the sound of laughter stimulated the body's natural healing process. That not only a affected the patient's outlook, they begin to recover better, faster. Hearing other people laugh bring healing. Imagine what happens on the inside of us when we live joyfully. 
not only affects us mentally, it affects us physically. Laughter will help you stay younger. Every time you laugh, what's known as the youth hormone increases 87%. That's the hormone that slows down the aging process. It helps you stay younger and fresher. Seeing people that have been through a difficult time in life under stress and pressure. You see them two years later, it looks like they aged 20 years. Why is that? When we don't laugh, we're not releasing the healing that God put on the inside of us. We live stressed, somber, discouraged. It's chemicals God designed to keep us young. Sitting there, inactive, ineffective. Well, Brother Mike, that's just not my personality. I'm a more solemn, serious person. I realize God made us all different. Our earliest baby's pictures, I'm smiling from ear to ear. Most of the time, what's happened is we've forgotten how to laugh. The average child laughs 150 times a day. The average adult laughs three times a day. Some people had not laughed in so long, their laughter has gotten rusty. You need to get that thing out, dust it off, and every day find some reason to laugh. Start taking your medicine. I read a common ingredient of people that live way up in their 90s wasn't their diet, wasn't their drinking, wasn't their smoke, wasn't their exercise routine. The fact that they're extremely joyful people. Never forgot how to laugh. Don't take everything so seriously. I met a man after the service a few years ago. He's 106 years old. Look 40 years younger. So happy, his mind was sharp. Stood in line 40 minutes waiting to visit. We could have gotten you a chair. You could have sat down. Because I don't need to sit down. When I get old, I'll sit down. The black man, as handsome as could be, and have one wrinkle on his face. So I can't believe you're 106. You look like you could be seven. He put his arm on Brother Mike's shoulder and says, Black don't crack. When he laughed and laughed, and when he walked away, he turned to the whole group and says, I'll see you next year. What about no wonder he's so healthy, he's full of joy, he's full of good goodness. He's full of happiness. He has a sense of humor. He loves to laugh. Think about all those years healing was flowing on the inside of him from laughter. Realize we're all going to get old. We're all going to die. I made up my mind. I'm not going to turn into a grumpy old man. I'm not going to get more and more sour. The older I get, the responsibility I have is stay full of joy. It's my time to go. I'm going to go like him, happy. Really good nature. I'm in my 90s. I'm still going to have a smile. I'll be telling my jokes. Still have my hair. It may not be real, but I'm going to have some. Sometimes we think the older we get, the more solemn we're supposed to be. The less fun we're supposed to have. It's not God's way. Scripture says we're to finish our course with joy. Don't have joy if you don't have to take time to laugh regularly. You're not good nature. You're not going to finish your course. But God wants you to learn. Old is all in our mind. Just because our physical body ages, mean our attitude and our thoughts have to get old. I knew a man at the gym was 83. He was happy and fun to be around. Like he was my age. I asked him how he stayed so young. But Brother Mike, I don't think old thoughts. Think of myself as an old man. Think of myself as in my 20s. So you're a spirit person. The real you that live on the inside is ageless and live forever. Sometimes we talk ourselves into being old and sour. Our father was 75. We'd be walking by a group of people. See somebody maybe in their 60s. Say, look, look, Brother Mike, look at that old man. I think Daddy's 20 years younger than you. My father's mine. He was still young. My father was a respected pastor of Faith in Jesus Ministries. He was a responsible person. Still loved to have fun. When we were in Mexico, I was a little boy. American tourists came up to my father over the post office. You find anybody that spoke English. Sent my father post office. A letter. My father looked at them kind of confused and said, No comprende espanol. He said, Any more drag? Post office. Now, a letter. He said, Post office. And he said, If you look for the post office, it's right around the corner. That guy looked at my father and said, Boy, I'll whoop you. You lose a child on the inside. You may look for opportunities to have fun. You may have to retrain yourself to look for opportunities. Sometimes, if we're not working, we feel guilt, stressed out, thinking about what we should be doing. All work and no play is out of balance. Give yourself permission to enjoy your life. Start taking your medicine. Not once a month, not once a week, but every day. You may have a serious position like my father, but you still can have a lightheartedness. When you're secure, you can even laugh at yourself. You can't change it. There's no reason to lose your joy. These days, people are very uptight on the edge. So much divisiveness in our society. If we're not careful, we'll think this is no time to enjoy life. No time to laugh. No time to see the humor. Just the opposite is true. More than ever, this is a time to live joyfully. Part of the solution is to cheer to the people around you. Smile on your face. Too much sadness in our world. Every person deals with hurt, disappointments. We all have stress and tension. Don't let that deceive you into living with the heaviness. Scourge, solemn. Brother Mike, I have a good excuse. I had a lot of bad breaks. Jesus said, in life, you will have difficulties. Knowledge, we're going to have challenges. Things are not going to be perfect. He went on to say, I have the solution. Be of good cheer. Let's say be discouraged, be sad, be offended. In tough times, you need your joy. Joy is what gives you strength. The enemy can deceive you into living with the heaviness. Discourage, solemn, be able to defeat you at every turn. Don't fall in that trap. Your circumstance, circumstances might not change, but you can change. You're letting everything burden you down. Make a decision right in the midst of the difficulty. It's going to be of good cheer. Studies show that living joyfully boosts our moon system.
It lowers our blood pressure. You know, people that laugh regularly are 40% less likely to have a heart attack. After releases the body's natural tranquilizers to calm down and sleep better. The United States represents 6% of the world's population. We take 90% of the world's tranquilizers. Too uptight. You're supposed to live stressed. Always thinking about your problem. Mind needs a break. Sometimes we give our body a vacation, but not our mind. You can go to the beach, watch the sunset, and still worry we'll worried about your finances. Think about what you should be doing. Give your mind a break. Scripture says, in God's presence is fullness of joy. If you don't have joy, you disconnect yourself from God's presence. So today, worry, stress, some. Um, you're separating yourself from the blessing, favor of God, strength that you need. I realize every day we're not going to be jumping up and down all the time. We have real issues. We have illness, situation in our health, in our marriage. What I'm saying is don't let those problems weigh you down. Live with the heavy. Have fun. You can't laugh. You have a serious issue. You have times where you still can be lighthearted. And there's several funerals. They can be very sad. I've noticed when someone gets up and starts telling funny stories, the person, the audience goes from crying to laughing. You feel the atmosphere change. It's like healing is taking place. The whole place. The whole room is being lifted. God didn't create you to live with the heavy around overwhelming. Get some joy in your life, some fun in your life, and laughter. That's what helped balance out the difficulty. Go go kart riding. Go to a comedy club. Go to have a drink. Go to have a steak. But I laid you that hadn't slept well in years. Constantly taking tranquilizers. You've been on them so long, they hardly had any effect. You tried everything. Different diets. Different medications. Different doctors. Went to a new doctor. He gave her an unusual prescription. He told her every night before she went to bed, she used to watch something funny. A movie. Funny comedy. Funny joke. Something to make her laugh. She started doing this night after night. She began sleeping better. Hey, she's off all that medicine. Sleep like a baby. What was the problem? She was having to take man-made tranquilizer. She wasn't releasing the natural tranquilizer. God put in us. Could it be that you received the healing you've been longing for? Headaches, the chronic pain, the depression, the insomnia, the addiction go away. You just lighten up and laugh more often. Much of the sickness we face today are stress related, too uptight. The doctor gave us a prescription to take a pill several times a day. He'd be very strict to follow his instructions, even if we had to get up in the middle of the night. I have a prescription for you, not from the doctor, but from your creator. It says stay cheerful, laugh every day, experience joy and happiness, and good nature, the humor in life. If you stay on your prescription, have a merry heart, you'll sleep better, be more creative. These areas of chronic pain and sicknesses will begin to go away. A is a doctor and this lady came into his practice. He had a severe case of fibromyalgia. Very painful. She spent hours a day in bed suffering. He had chronic fatigue, no energy. She's in poor health, not only physically, but emotionally. He's gone through tough times and lived a very depressed life. He gave her medicine for the pain. He knew that was the only treatment symptom, the root cause. He asked her, how long has it been since you had a good hearty laugh? She thought about it for a moment and said, Dr. I had had a good laugh in over 30 years since I was a little girl. If your prescription is to go rent every funny movie you can. Uh, every funny laugh as much as you can. She began to do that lying in bed. Of feeling sorry for herself, started laughing. Little by little, she got her joy back. She noticed the pain started to subside. Had more energy, felt better. She went back to the doctor. The moment she walked in, he knew something was different. There was a sparkle in her eye. She had a smile on her face. He said, Doctor, I've never felt this good in all my life. All of us have a well of joy, well of happiness. When we were children, it flowed free. Laugh, we had fun, good nature. Too often, our well is dried up. Stones of worry, stones of, stones of pressure. Now the water doesn't flow. Genesis 26 says, Isaac redug the wells. The Philistines had clogged up. I think it's interesting. Isaac's name means laughter. Significant. Isaac was the one that redug the well. I'm just saying, if you want to get your well unclogged, see his goodness flow in new ways. To get your joy back. After it's one of the best ways to unclog your will. I'm asking you to develop a lifestyle when you see the humor in everything. Laughing with your children, laughing with your family, laughing with your job. Be a good nature. The scripture says in Job, God will fill your mouth with laughter. That's God's dream that your life will be full of laughter. If you receive it, can you say amen today? We don't like to end our program without giving you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Just say this simple prayer with me Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. You said that simple prayer with us. We like to believe you got saved. Get into a good Bible preaching church. Put God first place in your life. He'll take you places you never dreamed. Stay tuned for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and show you his kindness, his love, and his mercy. May he crown your head with the crown of favor. May he open the windows of heaven and pour blessings upon your life. You have no room to receive in Jesus' name. Thank you for your faithful financial support of Faith in Jesus Ministry. 
We preach the gospel around the world. We figured out YouTube cost about a dollar per viewer to get people and saved into the kingdom of heaven. So if you send me $20, I'll get 20 people saved. If you send me $1,000, I'll get 1,000 people saved. If you send me $20 million, I'll get 20 million people saved. So bless the gift and bless the giver. We'd like to send you for your March partnership with Faith in Jesus Ministries, our CD of the month. It's all Brother Mike's sermons on one CD that you can share and like with others. And be sure to share and like my videos and subscribe to my channel to get some good Holy Spirit preaching in. We're able to do that because we're totally debt free. We've been debt free since we got this thing started in 1982. In Jesus name. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your tithes, your gifts, and your offering. We especially thank you for your gifts, Lord. So we bless the gift and we bless the giver 30, 60, 100 fold and a thousand times return in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Brother Mike still needs that $100,000 in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.